Hey everyone, Cursed Deck Builder here, making our way to 10,000 decks. And we are looking at a Mishra Eminent One deck that comes from Crimson Arcana. As always, the deck list will be in the video description below, so I recommend you take a look at it at the same time I do. That way you can make your own decisions and opinions, and then we can see if we agree or not. How fun. So, who is Mishra Eminent One, and what do they do? So this is a 5 mana 5-4 five, in Grixis that says, at the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of target non-creature artifact you control, change its name, make it a 4-4, four, four, give it haste, and then at the end of your turn, you're going to sacrifice it. So what does this immediately speak to me? This immediately tells me that we want a deck where we're going to get copies of our artifacts and we're going to turn them into creatures and attack. Let's do the next thing we always do and we're going to look at the curve. You can see the curve is a little wonky here. I do I do like the start of it but then we have this weird dip going to four another dip six another dip and then nine. We've got three nine mana spells. Granted Two of them are reduced in their cost. Blasphemous Act goes down to one. Chiscoria goes down to three. Portal of Phyrexia is out here as our nine. So we have a bit of a wonky curve, but that's okay. If we roll up, we can look at the lands. We have 37 lands, which feels a bit high. And we have a little less than I'd expect for Mana Rocks. Chrome Mox, Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Demir Signet, then we have Racto Signet, Commander Sphere, and Cursed Mirror. That feels a little low. So let's see what this deck is trying to do. With something like Mishra Eminent One, we're going to do a bit of a floor to ceiling test, right? What is the floor of this card? Well, the floor of this deck card is that it doesn't do anything. But let's think of a much more reasonable floor, considering we are in an artifact deck we should almost always have an artifact ready to be cloned. So I think a reasonable floor would be a card like Command Sphere, where you get your 4-4, and then when it dies, before the trigger happens, you can sacrifice it, and you'll draw a card. So attack with a 4-4 and draw your card. That's a floor that I'm unsure if I love, for a card like Mishra, who is five mana. A five mana commander who create, who deals four damage and draws? I don't know. Though I can see how that's strong, I don't particularly think, I don't think that's very, very strong. So let's lean a little further up and let's actually go all the way up and see what the ceiling of Mishra Eminent One is. Well, the ceiling is that you've got one of these cards, these last few cards into play. Nautiloid Ship exiles graveyards and puts creatures from those graveyards into play. Coveted Jewel draws you three cards. Drachnilen um, gives you, it exiles a creature. Gaunti's Either Heart gives you extra turns. Spine of Ishtar vindicates. And Portal to Phyrexia, that does a lot. It just, it makes each opponent sacrifice three uh, creatures. <laughs> We're going to get a bit recursive here. Let's see the floor to ceiling test on Portal to Phyrexia. I would say an adequate floor is this creature, you play this and you get four creatures sacrificed and the ceiling is like 12 creatures. This is fantastic. So at its ceiling, Mishra with Portal of Phyrexia is an incredibly, incredibly powerful set. You have a commander that just made a copy of one of the strongest cards in your deck and has destroyed the board for your opponents. So what do we do here? We've, we've noted the ceiling and we've noted the floor. How, how do we adjust in a deck like this to ensure that we get the results that we want? So there's a few things we can do. The first thing would be is it doesn't hurt to drive up the floor a little bit. Going to 
Ooh, I love that it's in caps. I can't spell prophetic, but there it is. Let's take a look at prophetic prism, for example. Prophetic prism is one of those cards that fixes your mana, but it ETBs and draws your card. Uh, Guild Globe, I believe it is. Guild Globe does something similar where it changes your mana, but once again, enters the battlefield, draws your card. Golden Egg does the same thing, draws your card. And a little lower, Chromatic Star, if I could spell it, let's go to English. Uh, Chromatic Star, when it dies, it draws you a card. All of these are good, I think. They aren't fantastic cards. But not only do they replace themselves when they come into play, that if you need to make a copy of them with Mishra, it's fine. It's, it's you get a card back at least. We've made the floor a little more consistent. It's not as good as the floor being Icar Wellspring or Mycoloth, uh, sorry, Mycosynth Wellspring. The problem is their very specific effects are very difficult to emulate. There's not a lot of cards that do this exact thing of having both triggers on ETB and uh, uh, dying. So it's a bit harder to do that. In the same way that I'd love the floor to be Wish Claw Talisman, because that means um, you'd get a you'd get a hasted creature that can tap and tutor your card every every turn. That's really good. And so, however, Wish Claw Talisman is not a card that is easy to emulate. So you're not going to have extra copies. So those can't be the floor. So the first thing we can do is raise the floor from Command Spear to at least on ETB with a few of these cards. So that's one direction we can take it, but I will admit it is not a fun direction. It is kind of the boring one where we just get a bunch of cyclers and improve our deck that way. You know what I would like to do? I would like to play with Portal to Phyrexia. That's the whole fun of it, right? You're putting this deck in uh, together so that you can clone Portal to Phyrexia. We have a bunch of other clone effects, uh, such as Machine God's Effigy and Phyrexian Metamorph, uh, effects that have a way to get this portal to go. And we have a few ways to cheat that in. We want this to be one of like the perfect cards in our deck. So why not, instead of trying to raise the floor to meet the ceiling, why don't we make the ceiling a lot more easier to reach? I want to put in Unmarked Grave, and I want to put in another card that I'm sure you're familiar with. It's called Trash for Treasure. Trash for Treasure says sacrifice an artifact and then reanimate an artifact. So we actually already have this here on Goblin Welder and Doretti as is minus two. I would like more of it. I would like, oh, excuse me. I would like as many different effects that do trash for treasure. I believe there's a blue one, it's like Argavian something. It's not as good, but I mean, I'm going to take it. Return of that battlefield. Argavian Restoration. So even blue has this ability. There's a few others, but anything that just trash for treasure, I immediately want. I also want any ability like Unmarked Grave that is going to put Portal to Phyrexia into your graveyard to prepare for it. Goblin Engineer is the one I'm thinking of, which when it ETBs, you can search your library for an artifact card and put it into your graveyard. Now, it has its own trash for treasure, but it has the clause that it can't trash for treasure a card that is higher than three CMC, but that doesn't matter because the main thing you wanted to do is put the portal into your graveyard. This would be the direction I would take with the deck in, right? I want to make that ceiling consistent. So I want every time to get portal of to Phyrexia into play. And I want that just to stick around. And I want to make copies, keep the board clear. Fantastic. That's exactly where I want to be. So that's that's the direction I would take. Now, in terms of other adjustments or cuts, I think you have no reason not to be playing the rest of the Signets and Talismans. As always, our Signets are 
These, this collection of cards and talismans are this selection of cards where you have creativity, uh, dominance, and indulgence. I know indulgence uh, is cheaper than I remember. It has dominance. Dominance is fine. Are they both printed in four? Yeah, it must be because they've both been reprinted. However, those those three and, and the enemy ones are always cheap because they were in a very open set. But with those three, plus the signets, plus arcane signet, I think you would have the full set. I think you should do this because you have a tricolor commander. Mana is tough to put together sometimes. And you want to ramp. You want to ramp into the majority of your deck, which is kind of in the middle here. A lot of really high powered cards at four mana and above. But once again, you just want Mishra. You want Mishra to come out, then you're going to need to ramp into it. There is, of course, always the dream of naturally ramping into one of these cards. That's also an option. <laughs> so, I want to see more ramp. Uh, the next thing I want to see is I wouldn't mind if we got rid of cards like the Devil. The Devil isn't particularly strong here. You have not as much black as you do the other colors, and you're using two black pips here on a card that I think is particularly medium. If you want removal, you can play Terminate. If you want this specific effect, I think you're better off with Dreadbore, which is destroy creature or planeswalker for one less mana, or Cola, I'm gonna say K Command. I think that always gets it. Yeah, Colagan's Command, which is something very similar. It doesn't deal destroy, but destroys an artifact and um, has another plethora of good, good abilities. So, looking at these, I, I find those to be better options than Bedevil. I also think um, Bede I, I, you might be thinking that, hey, Cursed, Bedevil is instant speed and Dreadbore is sorcery. Why would I play Dreadbore? Uh, I would suggest when are you holding up three mana? This is a very proactive deck. You are playing artifacts, and then with those artifacts, you're playing your commander, and then after which you're playing more artifacts. You don't really have the means to hold up mana. In fact, I'm also a little confused about these two. An offer you can't refuse and swan song are cards that we see at CEDH levels traditionally because they are incredibly cheap and their downsides are made up for the fact that the power level of the cards you're counterspelling are so high that it doesn't matter. And they also are made to be used in conjunction with many other counterspells. So when your opponent casts a spell, you swan song it with the knowledge that they're going to probably counter the swan song. That's kind of, people don't really talk about this, but that's kind of the soft power of swan song is that you use it in a way that either you don't care about the bird or you're actually expecting them to counter it, so you don't even need to worry about the bird existing. Same thing with an offer you can't refuse, except for I would say two treasures is a lot more important than a 2-2 two -two bird. In both cases, I think the cost is too high for the power level your deck is presenting, and I would be just way happier if you played Counterspell. Just nice and classic Counterspell, in case you've never seen it. Yes, it costs twice as much as those cards. Yes, it costs an additional blue pip, which isn't free. But I think you're just going to be happier with it. You're just going to be happier with the ability to say no. I've said this before, and I'll, I'll say it again. Um, I don't particularly like decks that play one or two counterspells. A lot of the soft power of counterspells is the implication that you have others. You know, once you play, once you cast that initial counterspell, your opponents are a little suspicious of you. Once you cast that second counter spell, who boy, they're going to double check you anytime you have mana open, even if you have nothing to do with it. And since you won't generally have mana open, I, and you can't really maintain that threat, I don't really love the inclusion of counter spells in. I know it's one of those cardinal rules that you're in blue, you should play counter magic. Eh, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think that should be always the case. Uh, seemingly uh, here, a braid and Red Sun's Twilight also stick out at me. 
as cards that I'm a little confused. You know your playgroup better than I. I would have to see quite a few artifacts before I would be playing these cards. Like, you're playing Vandal Blast, and I get that because the ceiling is really high and the floor is pretty good too. But not so much on Red Sun's Twilight. I get I get that you don't have access to Shatter Shattering Spree or the like. Uh maybe it's not Shattering Spree, the four mana red destroy all creatures. Uh sorry, destroy all artifacts. Let's look it up. We have whole reason this is here. It is Shatterstorm. I understand that you can't play this card, but are your opponents playing enough artifacts that it's really worth it to play Red Sun's Twilight? I'm I'm just I'm just unsure. Yeah. Faithless Looting, I didn't initially, when I first looked at this deck, I wanted to take this out instantly because Faithless Looting is a very bad card when you're playing it fairly. But if you follow my suggestions and go for a trash the treasure kind of side plan to get Portal of Rexia in, then you can absolutely keep this card. It's very, very good. And I have one more suggestion. And I think this is a fun one. I want you to play Obeka. Because you're already playing the... Where's the time thing? Sundial of the Infinite. Play Obeka. She does the same thing. She doesn't cost mana, so you don't have to hold up mana. So that when you create your clones for the turn, at the end of the turn, when they're triggered to die, you just end your turn. Bam, you get to keep it. This enables a lot more of the cards to that have not eight ETBs or sacrifice effects to be worth it. For example, um, being able to actually get the upkeep triggers to Portal Phyrexia is really great. I'm trying to think of an example. There's not really as much examples. Most of them you, you've done well to want them to die. Being able to keep Aether, Sp Aether Spellbomb actually is pretty good because then it maintains the threat of its existence where you can at any point bounce something. I really like that. So Obeka does let you keep some of the stronger cards, but much more importantly, it lets you keep four fours. I think that's really the reason you're doing that. Keeping extra four fours is great. Uh, it's just going to push your board ahead and should they all be cards such as um where are they the wellsprings then when they inevitably do die from a board clear you get to reap the re rewards after i think that's generally what i have to say about this deck um i think the the curve is a little strange but a lot of that is fixed by adding mana rocks because i can see there's a bit of there's a bit of one and three. There's a bit missing here, and two goes up high, but I don't think that's really a problem. You're an artifact deck. Every subsequent uh, mana rock you play is better for you. In the same way, 37 lands feels really high. Traditionally, we play a lot of lands in decks that want to play a land every turn, right? Through through like uh, extra land plays in green, or by the fact that they're drawing many cards to guarantee the land drops. But you're neither of these things, and you are an artifact deck. So I, I just want you to play more mana rocks to even, even out this section. And remember, if nothing else, those mana rocks are just 4-4s. Four and I don't think that's, that's a bad floor. Overall, I like this deck. Um, the last thing I'll say, I keep looking at Worm Coil Engine. I'm unsure. Um, you have enough clone effects that I'm okay with it, but... It does feel particularly weak next to all of the other cards. Like Marionette Master, if you can clone that, you are so much happier to do so, right? Like two Marionette, Marionette Masters, and you are, you're basically protected from every board clear forever. So, well, Exile, notwithstanding. But otherwise, like, I'd prefer that. I'd prefer to clone a lot of these cards, but Worm Coil isn't it. Sorry, Bide into Thassa is the other one. That I'm not too impressed with because I just I don't see you amassing a very large army. You've got your commander, you've got a bunch of utility creatures here, primarily outside of Worm, Worm Coil Engine. These are creatures that are not meant to attack, they're meant to support. And then you're going to be making a 4-4 every turn that doesn't last till the end of the fight. I don't know. I, I think Biden of Thassa isn't great here. I, I agree that it's super cute that if you 
turn it, if you clone that with Mishra and you attack, you draw two cards. Eh, I, I don't know. I, I feel like there's better things you can do. That's 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 how I feel. Overall, I think I think this deck, if if I'm correct, if I'm correct, and this is the direction you're gonna to want to take it, where these are the best cards, and you examine the floor to ceiling argument on Mishra, and you are satisfied with the prospect of just playing Portal to Phyrexia more often, I think you're going to see a lot of success. If, alternatively, you're looking for a more well-rounded experience while keeping a bit of variety in the types of cards you have, I think you could just round out the early cards with just a bunch of artifacts that tap for mana, change mana, but mainly enter the battlefield, draws you a card. Because it is card advantage to clone that every turn. It's a lot less flashy, but it is a lot safer. If you do make changes and have another draft for me to look at, I'd love to see it. I have a form in the video description below where you can put in your deck and I'll take a look at it. Or you can put any other deck and I'll take a look at it. In addition, I would be very grateful if you hit the like button, the comment button, the subscribe button, and any other button that you see because it is very helpful to the channel as we just started a week ago and we're trying to keep that momentum going. I hope this deck uh, assist video was helpful to you, and uh, I wish you good luck in building Mishra.